Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Zodiac Bandit, and today we have some spoilers for Campaign 3 of Critical Role up to episode 86, so if you aren't caught up yet, I recommend going to get caught up, and this is your last warning. We're going to move right into the video after here, so spoilers. One more, spoilers. Over the last couple of episodes, Matt has done a ton of setup. He has answered a handful of questions, and while answering those questions, he has set up a ton more questions going on in the background sort of making us try to figure out what the hell is going on and it's all over the place with all these setup with all the questions being asked with very few questions being answered in this process and that is bound to happen as we move toward the end game of this campaign but there was something that happened in the last episode that sort of got me thinking quite a bit about the potential return of Dorian Storm so in episode 86 two things were established that really makes me think Dorian is coming back or at least a guest character will be showing up now I, I believe Dorian is a strong hint for a handful of reasons But I will get to that in a little bit the first setup was they found a back door onto Rudus That is in Isilra They went through a portal in an underground temple that led to a lake in Isilra, which is really cool It's in Lake Umamu, but I don't think that's gonna be on the map anywhere So you're just looking at Isilra right now, but what was really cool about this is now we have a new way to get to Ruidus that is nowhere near as dangerous. It is still dangerous, but it's not anywhere near as dangerous as trying to run through the dig site and going through the Bloody Bridge and ending up in the Bloody Bridge encampment and trying to escape there. This is way easier, and now, after a bit of digging, they've made a new tunnel leading right out from that little uh, temple. So we have a new entrance to Ruidus, and that is going to be a massive boon to the party and to the grim verity moving forward and the other big takeaway from episode 86 was they could now use sending while on exandria to talk to people on exandria they tried to use sending on ruidus to talk to people on exandria but it didn't quite work so it seems that sending now works if you're on the same i'm going to say planetoid so if you're on exandria you can talk to exandrian people and if you're on ruidus you can talk to people on ruidus that seems to be how it's working right now for some reason it's not working it wasn't working for a long time it was blocked they weren't able to communicate while the two parties were separated they weren't able to talk to the mighty nine or keel for a while but now it's working again and the big takeaway from this whole conversation was that keel would be sending a group of people to lake umamu to sort of investigate and then potentially follow the party through that portal and sort of aid them in some way this is where i think it gets really interesting talking about the potential of someone showing up to help them and how it could be a guest and how it could be Dorian. During the whole sending portion of the episode, they talked to a bunch of characters, obviously, like I mentioned before. Keyleth, Jester, and Caleb were the ones that got focused on, but there was one more character who Orm attempted to message, but the message either didn't go through or he wasn't answering for some reason. He couldn't answer, he was sleeping, he was in distress, and you know, if talking would give his position away, we don't know. And that was Dorian Storm. Orum picked up his sending stone that they've been using to communicate with Orum throughout a good portion of this campaign and tried to send him a message saying, go to Keyleth and, you know, you'll be safe there. This not being answered to me is one of two things. First of all, Matt didn't want to answer for Robbie. But secondly, I think it could be setting up for Dorian showing up and helping them and being part of this sort of rescue team or being sort of part of the backup team going on to Rudis. Now, it makes sense because there's a connection between Dorian and the party, and Dorian also has had spent a brief bit of time with Keyleth. Uh, it was the same thing that Fern Orum did before Campaign 3 started. So there is a connection that Dorian would have in going to uh, meet with Keyleth and sort of having her be an aide. So in my head, it works like this. After the events of Kaimel, the Crown Keepers need to sort of go somewhere safe. Now, they could go to Iman from Kaimel, or they could go to Zephyr from Kaimel. Now, Iman is less safe because that is where the majority of their enemies are. That's literally where, like, that, you know, that evil gang is sort of hiding out. So, realistically, it would be way safer to go to Zephra. Now, timeline-wise, we don't know exactly when the Kaimel situation happened. We do know it, like, once Dorian left, he would have had to travel up to Kaimel and he would have had to wait for all of his friends to show up. Or maybe they were already there. We don't know. But we do know that this has taken place already as Dorian has sort of answered messages in the past and... We do know that it's happened. So now he could be making his way over slowly because keep in mind, the Crown Keepers would have to travel much slower. They don't have a skyship or anything like that at their disposal and they would have to make their way over to Zephra, which is why if the party, the Bell's Hell, showed up to Zephra, 
Dorian might not have shown up yet because one, they're being chased by you know an evil gang who they're trying to avoid, and the other one is they have to travel slower with you know this group they're not able to travel as fast they don't have any teleportation at their disposal they don't have anything like that so traveling to zephyr would be a much larger ordeal for the crown keepers than it would be for the bell's house they have zero transportation options or anything like that so realistically him taking a while to get this to zephyr even it being after everything takes place makes a lot of sense to me and the last time we even saw anything from Dorian was when they scried on him and he and the party being the crown keepers were sort of hunkering down somewhere they were trying to stay safe obviously something was going on with opal we heard that a couple of times so taking their time to get somewhere safe aka zephra a place dorian damn well knows is safe to me makes a lot of sense so timeline wise it really works out well if they take their time and they've sort of been slowly making their way from kaimal to zephra and they've finally made it there and now keel thinks that it's a good idea to send dorian and maybe a handful of other members of the crown keepers with the exception of Opal, sort of keeping her safe and Zephyr would be a best idea in my opinion to sort of keep this entity down and sort of away from any combat and sounds like a great idea. It could be why she's busy. It could be why Keela said that she's busy during the sending section of the episode. So I do think a lot of things sort of connect here that makes sense. Suddenly the crown keepers show up in Zephyr. She has to deal with it. They're running out of time. A bunch of things are going on. That is why Keyleth is super busy. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So sending another group of people who she can trust, like Dorian and a handful of other people who are part of the Ashari, makes a lot of sense to me. So Dorian leading a squad of Ashari through the portal and then joining up with the team makes a lot of sense and honestly works out really, really, really well, in my opinion. Now, Dorian is not the only guest option that we have here. We actually have two more setups, in my opinion, that sort of set up a potential guest coming from two different directions other than Dorian showing up that are really cool in my opinion. The first one is someone in the Ruby Vanguard who decides they want to leave the Vanguard and join the party. I think that would be super compelling. Matt has set this up through the character of Ivan Hydroga, who was a character they met ages ago back during like the early portions of this campaign. And he said he wasn't a big fan of being there, which could be like, you know, oh, I'm just annoyed. But if one person like that is thinking this, there's another person in the Ruby Vanguard somewhere who's like, I don't like what we're doing at all. So when they see the party, the people they've been told are the bad guys, and they see that, you know, they're not necessarily doing bad things, they might fucking switch sides and be like, no, 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 no. I need to be with these guys. These are the good guys by everything what I'm seeing. So to me, that would be a really cool setup because it would be like an adverse of Bodor. It would be like a, the, a mirrored version of Bodor. One person who was truly part of the Vanguard and then another person who thought they were part of the Vanguard, but realistically they align with the party. I think that would be really cool and would be a nice little mirror of Bodor and would be a really interesting concept. And the last little bit of setup for potential guests showing up is through the Resistance. Now the Resistance is a group of what we would imagine is mostly Rhyloran people sort of resisting against the Imperium on Ruidus, which I think is a really cool concept because one, it might not just be filled with Rylorans, it could be filled with Bormodo, it could be filled with humanoids from Xander or Dreamers as the uh, Rhyloran people call them or the Bormodo people call them. It could be filled with all sorts of people. But I think what's really interesting about this is it could open up the Rylorans as a playable race, which I think is something that would be really really cool because like the, the concept designs for all of these characters for the Rylorans is really cool so to have one that's like a basic Rylorin, one that doesn't have like super beefy strength to them or one that isn't like super mind powered or whatever but at the same time these could just be the sub races of Rylorans and that would also be really cool to be able to play as a barbarian juggernaut Rylorin just sounds really badass to me and I just think all of these classes are really cool or all of these subclass or, or sub races are really cool and could be really interesting but to have like a basic one that could be any class and not have to sort of interfere with any mind powers also sounds really cool to me so introducing a fifth Rylorin that is playable sounds really cool and really fun to me so the idea of a resistance character showing up and being the guest is really cool now not to mention a former ruby vanguard member like i mentioned before could also fit in the spot they could have been part of the ruby vanguard and then joined the resistance so realistically that is the same setup for them but it might not be you know it just depends on how you want to introduce the character so i think this is a really cool idea to sort of introduce a resistance guest and to me this has been the one that i've always thought since the minute the resistance was sort of attempted to be a thing or was first introduced to us as viewers once the resistance became a known thing i said that is how a guest character is going to show up on rudis and i really hope it's a rylorn because the idea is just so cool to me that we get a rylorn that's playable 
And yeah, I would love to introduce Ryle Orange to my game. So give me a Ryle Orange guest player because it would open up the race. So there you have it. The potential ways a guest character could show up on Ruidus. I think, you know, two of them are really interesting. The Ruby Vanguard, one where one person just leaves the Ruby Vanguard, is really cool and is an interesting mirror to Bordor, but it's like my least favorite of the bunch. I really like the idea of someone coming through the portal and sort of being an aide that came from Alexandria. Hopefully it's Dorian. It doesn't have to be Dorian, but it could be. But the one that intrigues me the most is a resistance character because the Ryloran idea is really cool. But let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that this is going to happen? Do you think that a guest character is going to show up? Or are we just going to ride out the rest of the campaign much like Campaign 2 did without any guest characters showing up? I would hope they don't. The reason they did that last time was because of COVID. But at the end of Campaign 1, they had a bunch of their old guests show up. And I really think that would be really cool for Campaign 3 again. So who knows? I think a bunch of characters could show up. Uh, a resistance character is really cool in my opinion to be the best one to show up but let me know what you guys think down below which one do you think would be the most interesting and do you have any other interesting ideas could there have been someone hiding on rudis this whole time waiting for another dreamer to show up on rudis that's possible actually it's kind of interesting now that i think about it but anyway there's been a lot of setup over the last couple episodes so i'm going to make some videos about it hopefully i can come up with a couple more theories or ideas potential options that could happen while they're on rudis because we have two weeks now before another episode comes out of Critical Role, so we have plenty of time to think. So, yeah, I'll see you guys on Friday for whatever video I make next. Peace.